What I'm about to do in this video carries a definite risk of causing an electrical fire. Do not attempt this unless you feel confident in your own abilities. Well friends, a couple of years ago my Dremel stylus died and I had to fix it by replacing the batteries. Since then it's not working so great again and I don't think it's the batteries. Rumor has it around the internet that it's probably the charger. So we're going to open this up, see if we can find anything wrong inside. And the first thing we're going to have to do is get these screws out and they are some triangle head screw. I don't have any triangle head screws but I have a hex head screw that's about the same size and I think I can grind it down to fit that triangle. Now it seems obvious to me there's more than these two screws holding this thing together, so very likely underneath these foot pads are four more screws. Yep. One, three, four. And save those pads because I'm going to put them back on. That was just a nice tight fit. Okay, now looking inside here. One of the first things you want to do is take a look and see if there's anything that's obviously burnt. And luckily, it looks like they just put a spot of glue on these plastic pegs sticking up to hold this board in place. When I changed the batteries on this, lots of people made noise that I was doing it on a steel table. That's why this piece of wood is here. Here I'm checking the voltage at the contact points, which I actually should have done before I took it apart. So it's not getting any juice out there. So here we'll just follow this circuit, see if we... We'll take a look at the transformer output first. Which are these two points right here. And it's showing me 12 volts there. Which is good. And these three points are labeled. And that is giving me nothing. That is giving me nothing, and that is giving me nothing. Somewhere between the transformer output and the tool input, we're losing our voltage. Okay, so looking on the other side of this board, there are four diodes. It, you've got these two points are your AC coming in, and then these four points around the edge are diodes. And you can actually look at the the printed circuit board and you can tell that what they've got going on there is a bridge rectifier. So let's see if those diodes are good. I've got 15 volts there. So someplace between there and these little pins we're losing our voltage. And there's a whole lot of circuitry in there but one thing I think we can do is just jump from that bridge rectifier straight to the connector pins. So the voltage is a little high at 15 volts. So I'm going to put a resistor in there to drop it. And I did the calculation based on my best guess of how much current this drew. And it should have been a 6,000 ohm resistor. But uh, I don't have one of those, so I'm using two 3,000 ohm resistors. Let's see what kind of voltage we get now. Because I only want about 9 volts on this thing. Now one thing about electrical circuits is they will take the path of least resistance. So if I jump from my DC output right to my contact pins, it is going to just bypass all that circuitry. Okay, let's see if anything smokes. Okay, now all I've done here is put a couple dropping resistors uh, in between that bridge rectifier to uh, bring the voltage down to around 10 volts and I've just jump the bridge rectifier output right over to the contact pins over here. With no load I've got about 12 volts. Checking the voltage while it's under load, I'm getting 7 volts. Yeah, which is right where I want that actually. Now we'll let that charge for a while and see if we get our Dremel back. Now I'll be the first to admit, this is a very sketchy repair, and I would not leave this unattended while it's plugged in. But it is working. 
A better approach to this would be to yank that board altogether. Install your own full wave bridge rectifier, possibly with a filter capacitor on it, and go with that. In fact, maybe I'll just do that right now. One thing that I discovered really quick, that transformer is getting hot, so there's a lot of short circuiting going on in there somewhere. So we'll just get in there and cut these wires. There are three connections there. I'm not going to use that middle one. I'm just going to apply the charge voltage to the, to the positive and the negative. I've got some diodes here. There's some 1N 4003s, general purpose diodes. They should work just fine. For those of you that don't know how a bridge rectifier works, you see how these diodes have a stripe on one end? That stripe indicates the anode of the diode. So if you input your AC voltage here, only positive voltage will come out this side, and only negative voltage will come in this side. Because that's what a diode is, is a one-way valve for electricity. So electricity coming off that bridge rectifier is going to be pretty choppy. So what we're going to do is put this capacitor on the output of the bridge rectifier, and a capacitor is kind of like a bucket full of electricity. It'll smooth it right out. Now we'll solder that up and make sure we got the polarity of everything right. And with that circuit board gone, we got plenty of space for this tiny little circuit to fit just right inside the case there. And if anyone's interested, here's the circuit diagram. It's the most basic power supply you can have. Now if we plug that in, we should get plus there and minus there. And there we are, it's 16 volts. I think once we put the load on it, it'll probably drop. Okay, so there's the circuit all built up. And there's nothing wrong with having it hang in midair like this since there's no stress on it. But you see these springs under there present a possibility that it could short circuit. So what I'm going to do is put some double stick tape over those and stick this down onto it. This foam mounting tape is pretty good. And there we go. Let's make sure we still have our voltage. 16 volts. Put the load on it. Okay, it came down to 7 volts. That's perfect. Now put this back together with all those triangle head screws. Don't forget to glue those rubber feet back on. That's actually a much better repair than just jumping across to the terminals on this thing because who knows what is fried in here. I'm absolutely certain something was though because that transformer got really hot in about five minutes. Well that's still a pretty sketchy repair. Not as sketchy as it was. Now I'm absolutely certain part of the function of this circuit here is to shut down the charger if the batteries get too hot. Because something about lithium ion batteries, and that's what's in this thing, they catch fire sometimes. <laughs> so I still wouldn't leave this thing unattended and plugged in. Because without this battery management system, that thing could easily catch fire and burn your shop down. And we would not want that. Anyway, I'll leave links to the parts I used in doobly doo below, and if you want to try it, you can do it yourself. Do it at your own risk. Like I said, without that charge controller, you do run a definite risk of fire. So please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something on mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.